good. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Uh, we are speaking about assets management. Uh, why doing assets management? To know what uh, you want. To knowing uh, what is under warranty or not, especially for expensive hardware, servers and such. To planning the replacement and the budget uh, when budget time comes. And not asking for a small budget when you have tons of hardware <laughs> to replace. And also because there is legal obligation for the company to know uh, what you own. And um, I don't know the term in English. Uh, in French, you, we are speaking of immobilization. It's uh, what can be deducted from taxes and such. And well, first solution is uh, having a folder, paper, or <laughs> On the, on the computer with uh, all the uh, all the paper about it. It's not very efficient. It works well if you have one or two laptops. <laughs> well, second solution is having a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet shared. Uh, it will work up to a point. We have that before before at work. Uh, Twenty people who can edit one spreadsheet is a, a nightmare. <laughs> Okay, if there is really a two or three, I think it can work, but well. Well, what we use now is called uh, Gestion Libre de Parc Informatique, free management of uh, assets, uh, well, uh, IT assets. Uh, it's open source, it's web-based, and it's uh, written in PHP and using MariaDB database. And thanks to Romy Collet, <laughs> It's uh, available in Fedora and uh, Apple. Remy is one of the people who have created the software. <laughs> what you can do in it? You have two main parts, the inventory part and the help desk part. Uh, I will begin with the help desk. Well, first, uh, a bit of uh, publicity. Uh, it's not limited to small company with uh, hundreds of users. Uh, the French social security using it with more than uh, 100,000 people. So it's really working. Well, you need to very carefully um, choose the size of server, RAM. But yeah, it works with very big, it can work with really big uh, uh, network or small. <laughs> The help desk is IT compliant, if you are using IT. Uh, you have a web interface to open the request, or you can do it by mail, it depends on the actual workflow, so it can be flawless for the users. And uh, a request can be li linked to an, in an item in inventory. Uh, it's very useful when you are working on help desk for uh, users, not uh, the server part, but uh, and you can really customize it on tell that this user, when this user opens a ticket, it goes into that uh, queue. So because uh, it's a VIP and it goes on the VIP uh, <laughs> queue with a lower SLA, that's kind of thing. But this one is uh, the printer things, all the printers related things are going to this, this team because they're managing the printers. And you can very it takes some time to master it fully, but it's extremely less time. You can really customize it like you want. Well, you need to have users in it. So you can create your user manually. It's okay, but when you have a lot of users, it's easier to use the LDAP authentication or IT director authentication, depends on the company. Uh, to be honest, as system administrator, uh, the GLP uh, Open LDAP integration is one of the best. You can really choose what uh, is your primary key for user, which parameter to use. We don't have that case in all software. Well, and you have two group of rights. There is the rights on the inventory part, the rights on the help desk part, and the right to configure the software. And there is also a system called entities. Uh, an entities is, well, if you are a multi-structured company, 
can have a division with an entity, another as an entity, and the rights uh, are given per entities or on the wall. So you can give the rights, uh, well, uh, the people from an entity will not access the data of the other entities. But uh, technicians, they are in an entity, but they can access the full because they need to. Uh, and the accounting services can access to the inventory part, but only in reading, they can modify that kind of thing. You can really be, there is some profile uh, pre-created, but you can really create your own profile and customize it them as you need. We have done, done that. So, so the right management is extremely simple. It takes time. Yeah. And but the inventory, you have to fill it. Um, well, you can do it manually. So there is a web interface, very well done. It's a bit painful when you have a lot of help. <laughs> you can uh, import CSV file, export in the tool you are using now, and just import it. And you can even do it with uh, a bit of scripting and do it in, uh, when you extract the data from your accounting uh, software. The new common, you know, the new hardware can be imported automatically, or you can uh, bring them with an inventory tool. That would be some. Yeah. Well, to save time, there is a way to create. I don't know if you buy a Lenovo laptop uh, T440, you can create a template, a laptop uh, T440 with uh, some fields already uh, full. Uh, manufacturer fields, the hardware type, you should command 20 or the same, uh, that kind of thing. And there is a plugin system, you can extend the software, and the data injection plugin allow to import a uh, CSV file. Uh, you just have to associate, uh, to create a column, you choose the column and you associate. Uh, the column of the CSV file, you say this column, this is the serial number, this column, this is the type, say this column, this is the name of the user, and you just run the input. And you can even, if you, your data comi are coming from several sources, you don't need to mess up with your, fi your CSV file, you can do import one source and the, then a second source with a linking, there is a linking path. You just have to find a, key, a common key. <laughs> yeah. And another uh, plugin is extremely useful, it's called Web Services. It turns the web interface in, it creates a web ATC interface. So you can in interact with scripting. So what that's uh, this what we are set up at work. We are uh, exporting the the new hardware from the ERP database every night. Well, a bit of tweaking because it's XLS and we need CSV, but it's all it's easy to change. And then we import them and uh, with the data injection plugin plugin through web services, and it's done every night. Uh, with a phone, just a bit of scripting. <laughs> and uh, the main part of the scripting was uh, in the export part to categorize well the commands. That, that is a server, that is a laptop, that is a cell phone. All the way is to use another software to import it. Fusion Inventory is another software. It's Written in Perl, the agent is packaged in Fedora and in Perl, uh, and in almost all other Unix I know, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the server side is a GLP plugin, but it can also be linked to other um, assets management software. Uh, it's a fork from another project called OCS Inventory. Uh, the bo both projects are, are mainly French. Uh, OCS Inventory was is uh, heavily sponsored by the French uh, gendarmerie, the cops. <laughs> they are using it to manage uh, their assets. Yeah. Fusion can be run as a service and waiting for calls 
or you can run it through Chrome every night. So every the reason you decide. Yeah, it gets a, all, a lot of information, also hardware information, models, uh, details about the motherboard, processors, disk, memory. Yeah, and the software it go through. It can bring every uh, RPM package install. You need to there is a system of filter in GLPI. You can filter it because uh, you don't need to know that you have a libssh uh, for <laughs> I don't know the version <laughs> install on the 75 uh, laptop. <laughs> the software part is useful for software uh, well licensing mainly. And uh, we connected. Uh, we have an account on the computer. We are connecting now. That's more useful perhaps for, for Windows, but yeah, and it can run on all Unix, Mac OS X, VMware, OS X, <laughs> and Windows. Uh, the communication between the, the agent is sending information uh, with uh, by using HTTPS. So the secure part is not mandatory but recommended, of course. And there is also uh, an offline mode. You can store the information you have gathered in a file and you can inject them later in your inventory. It can be useful when it's uh, someone with a remote or when the pe people who are receptioning the computers are not very technical. Um, yeah. And you can link the it item you bring back in with Fusion in GLPI, you just have to specify what is the primary key, what is the, what element is the, the key. Is it the serial number, is it the, the OS serial number, when there is one? Or well, you can choose uh, several and uh, how to determine if uh, as there is a, an item we store twice. To have a clean uh, database. And Fusion also can discover, uh, use uh, net discovering features and net inventory feature. It uses ECMP and SNMP, mainly NetBIOS 2, to discover uh, on, a, um, IP on a network what is connected. You recognize it's a computer I already know. It is a printer. It is a switch. <laughs> it is uh, the network access. <laughs> And you can gather the information. And for printers, you can. It depends of the of the manufacturer, but you can also uh, gather information about consumption of paper. Can be useful. How many? Uh, how many? Uh, yeah. And for uh, for network, it uh, gather well everything is available through SNMP. For Cisco, it's a lot <laughs> of information. You can really, in, in G the GLPI part, you can tell for a switch which computer is connected to which socket. It can really be seen. Yeah. And you have a deploy feature. Personally, I never use it. Uh, it's more targeted for Windows than for Linux. And I know that it's using peer-to-peer to Allow, uh, to allow uh, faster downloading of the software between uh, the different computers. Yeah, and the S6 inventory is made through the uh, API, uh, VMware API, API, and it's not it's not a server with the uh, inventory. It's uh, an agent with a uh, who run a services, and the server is sending message telling launch the inventory for the ES6 without that IP and it gathers information about uh, yeah, uh, virtual machine. Well, I don't know if you you are using the VMware. No. no. <laughs> Me neither. Mm -hmm. We are running Zen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all this task uh, of discovery and inventory uh, are configured to the web interface, and you can be launched. You can launch them one time because you know that there is no hardware, or you can schedule them to be launched every week, every month, every day if you want. Yeah. 
thanks to the team of the both uh, of both team, I know them personally. So, uh, so thanks to Remy for his work. <laughs> thanks to Icon because I still uh, <laughs> um, thank you for this. Uh, I can make you a demo if you want because uh, explaining it it's interesting, but showing it's better. And then full screen. So. There is a demo on the website. Uh, presentation. Demonstration. The instance we are running at work uh, is on an older version, so. Uh, uh, well, I am in French. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the software can be translated in almost every language. Well, it's very well translated in a lot of languages. <laughs> because it, yeah, it's most of the developers are French, so the main tree is... Uh, yeah, there can be some glitch in English uh, version, <laughs> some translation. So you have the... <laughs> you arrive on the inventory part, and nice... Uh, easier that way. Well. So here you have some requests waiting for to be closed or to be uh, um, to be taken. You can have a view for your group, global. That's view of the same data. <laughs> if you can do the, data. Uh, the most interesting part for me is the inventory part. You have yeah. you can have a computer screen, software, network, other peripheral printers. You can manage your uh, consumable for printers also. So computers is the most interesting part. So here you have the base data, base set of data, where is the computer, who is using it, what model it is, who the manufacturer, the serial number, not it's a Windows. <laughs> and you have to can go into it's uh, the motherboard, the processor, you can be very thin. Or you can tell it's a virtual machine or a physical one. Because virtual machine you don't really bother about uh, the hardware configuration. <laughs> you can have the you can also well, yeah on Linux you can see the partition. pre existing partition software. No, there is no installed. And you can no, they didn't see. Yeah, they have connect. When you have a computer, you can connect it to a monitor, to a printer, to something, to some other hardware, an IP phone. Uh, so uh, it's all linked, linked as it's open. <laughs> and you can, when you declare, well, when someone will declare an incident, it. Uh, it can show the you, uh, you attribute the computer to a user, so the other elements are linked to, to this user. Uh, okay. Yeah, you have the managing part with uh, financial information, uh, command number, or how much you pay when the get warranty expired, so that kind of. Thing. I don't know if they have plugin installed. Administration screen. Project. Yeah, I forgot to speak about it. Uh, there, you can generate a report. 
for your management. Uh, number of uh, hardware bytes this year, number of for the eldest part two, number of requests, uh, time to take them in, in uh, consideration, time before closing, time before closing, that kind of thing. Well, I think I have make a well, so there's no plugin installed, so I think uh, I have to show you everything I can. Uh, do you have questions? Not set up here. Ah. Um, the future inventory is uh, stored is an XML file, mm -hmm. and um, it gathers yeah uh, software information, the partitioning, mm -hmm. users, uh, all the hardware uh, bits, okay. and it's important. Okay. Do you have to feed it the list of uh, machines to test, or does it detect with what exists on your network as well? Uh, for the computers, no, you, you are not forced to feed it before. Okay. We have at work we have done done it because we already have an inventory base, mm -hmm. and we don't want to rest, uh, <laughs> to reimport every, everything manually, so we have feed it before. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you install the agent the agent through your Ansible policy, mm -hmm. uh, it will get the information will uh, come. Uh, <laughs> okay. You just have to be careful to not have. Uh, Item in double and um, uh, choose uh, the parameters for import. Uh, mm, okay. What is the key for to declare an, an item is unique? Not generic host name or serial number for hardware. Okay. Just for virtual machine, it can be a bit tricky because uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no serial, no hardware serial number. Right. <laughs> Uh, the agent, yeah, fusion agent can be run uh, manually. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. okay. Is this uh, so you said you were using it with Zen? Yeah. And you can use it with Plenty as well. Uh, I think we don't use it uh, through the. Um, we we just inventory the Zen server as it's a virtualization server mm -hmm. and the via the virtual machine. Uh, with the agent on it. We don't use a specific... Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, there is also a plugin. It don't work for every manufacturer. It works for Dell. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, gather... Uh, bring back the information about warranty from the uh, constructor website. Ah, okay. <laughs> it makes it very convenient. Yeah, it's very convenient, but it don't work for every uh -huh. manufacturer. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps just... Well, it can be just adding the, the manufacturer and the, uh, the address to where the information is available. Mm -hmm. It can be easy, but sometimes it can be tricky. I don't know if it's required an authentication or some that kind of thing. Okay. For, I, for HP, it's uh, not very easy because you have to give a model number and a serial number to have the want mm -hmm. information okay. and the, the model number generally uh, we don't know what it is <laughs> it changes regularly when you buy a laptop in January you have a lab, uh, a number a model number and uh, in August it will be another <laughs> 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 because they have changed uh, per, it's not the same uh, memory uh, right. <laughs> that kind of thing okay Yeah, there is a plugin for um, a plugin to know uh, to not uh, make a to know where where the server are in the rack, in the server room mm -hmm. okay. in the rack. Okay. Be the, this one it's rack one, uh, mm -hmm. base three, uh, and okay. it's a three U unit three U server. Mm -hmm. can be, it can be useful uh, when you have a big server. Yeah, we can tell. So yeah, when you're a technician, <laughs> we can just tell him it's a uh, rack three or server. Mm -hmm. well, I generally put label on the server, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell him the name. It's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Also, this interface is an admin interface. interface. Uh, the, well, for people with less rights, uh, it's the same interface, just they have less choices. They don't see the choices they can't see. Then you can't use. Uh, the only different interface if is for users who can only submit a request. Uh, they just have a form to submit their request and see the pull request. <laughs> they don't have all, all the inventory part. Thank you.